Amen. We always feel we are alone. But anytime you are convinced that there is something beside you, something you trust, something you can hope on, then you are already victorious. You won't walk in that fear anymore. Amen? Mm -hmm. I've experienced that a lot in my life. That's why I'm a good testimony. <laughs> Somebody hearing me. I love that song. Though I don't know the writer of the song, you know, but I always love the song anytime I hear her singing it because I think it's one of her favorites. Anytime she's in it, you know, it catches me into the spirit. Amen? And I believe that song has related to some of us here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What we just did is not the message, but I believe the message is coming. I want us to be very, very relaxed. Don't be tensed. You are not in a war zone. <laughs> you are not in a war zone. Don't be hesitant. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> When you are at peace with yourself, peace works better for you. Do you know? When you are at peace, you are at peace with yourself, then peace begins to work for you. If you are not at peace, there is no way the word they call peace can have any effect in you. Amen? So try to be at peace with yourself. Amen? Mm -hmm. Try to be at peace with yourself, no matter the storm you see. No matter the storm. You only understand your storm, right? You don't know the storm of the next person sitting beside you. So if I decide to play my story, I believe you tend to appreciate God for yours. <laughs> to say, Lord, I thank you that I've not even got into that level or that stage. You know, I was discussing something with some guys and, you know, the guy looked at me, he's a neighbor, a very close neighbor of mine, and he said, Rudy, is it not because you cannot feed your family, that is why you are telling us that the Lord called you? I don't know if you can hear what I just said. A neighbor of mine, we live in the same property. I live upstairs, he lives downstairs. I'm talking about way back in Nigeria. This should be about 2004, there about. And he's a pilot. He studied in the US here, and he's lived here all his life. But somehow along the line, you know, certain things happened to him. He had to relocate back to Nigeria, and he was working in one of the private airlines. And someday this guy walked up to me and said, Rudy, do you? think it is not because you cannot feed your family. That is why you are telling us that the Lord called you. And I looked at him and I said, I pray that the Lord will not take you through what he has taken you through because you will fail. I said, I'll be praying for you. Do you know what the end result was? In less than a week, this guy was troubled. That's why I said, you have to be in peace for peace to work with you. He was troubled in less than a week. I don't know if my children could remember who they call Uncle Kola, no, Uncle K, that lives directly underneath us there. Oh. Now, he came to me as early as 5 in the morning, 5 a.m., banging on the door. And I said, who's that? He said, hey, Rudy, it's me, Uncle K, Uncle K. I said, what's going on? He came out. I opened the door. I stood by the door. I said, I'm okay, what? He said, hmm. Rudy, I've not slept. I said, what's wrong? He said, I've not slept. For four, no, for three days now. I believe God has been speaking to me. I said, look, the Lord is speaking to you. <laughs> this is somebody just a few days back that was not convinced that the Lord can even call somebody. How much more to speak to somebody? <laughs> So now God is speaking to you. I said, oh, how interesting. He said, you won't understand. The Lord said I should ask you whatever you need that I should provide it. 
Now he has to take care of my business. I don't know if you understand. God has placed him in a position to take care of my business because he mocked his own. You can't mock God. He mocked his own. And God told him, he said, you will not find peace till he finds peace. So not until I say stop, he can't stop. So he was restless. And I said, oh, is that what the Lord said to you? He said, I said, okay. That is what the Lord said. I don't have this thing. He went about his business at early, as early as five. He went to a store, woke up the guy, paid for everything. Raw food, he was just paid for stuff. And brought everything to the house. Before seven, my house was stocked. <laughs> it was stocked. As of this point in time, because I stopped all my business and everything I was doing, money was not flowing in the way it ought to. So things are kind of rough. Then you don't mock what God is doing. Because you never can tell the end. Amen? Amen. And so he stopped the whole house. And Steve walked up to me and gave me money in cash and said he has instructed the boy in the store and told me of the store that any time I am short of anything, I should go there. <laughs> Who is doing it? Is it me? But he tried to mock my story. That is why I said if you have not heard the story of the next one, you think your storm is so great. Your storm is so rough. Ravaging, nobody can handle it. Who told you? Who told you? There is nothing bigger than God. Amen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing Amen. is bigger than everything. It is how far you see God. That is the same level you worship Him. If you can't see Him for who He is, there will always be a restriction or a restraint in your mood. Or level of worship. So you have to open up. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. I bless God this morning for those words. It just came. Amen? Amen. And I believe it came because God wants to bless somebody with that. So try and be at peace with yourself. Don't look at your raging stone and think that you are the one caught in the worst situation in life. No. There are others. But God is still faithful to bring you out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you are with your Bible, I want us to quickly turn to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Somebody should give her a Bible. I want her to have a Bible. Luke chapter 9. Give her one, uh, Jessica. Luke chapter 9. Joshua, come and sit here. You are not like me that you can't see clearly, you know, my eyes. Yeah, I need glasses. We bless God for glasses too. <laughs> this is Luke chapter 9. You look for verse. 28 through 36. We'll be reading from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. If you are there, let me hear you say an amen. So we are not there. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Are we there now? Amen. Hallelujah. So we are following. Today well, is not the verses. I'm sorry, 29. 28. 28 through 36. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, it is my prayer that the Lord will help me deliver this the way He wants me to this morning. Amen. Because first and foremost, this is a home fellowship. Praise the Lord. So it, the setting is kind of different from the setting of a church. Some of us, we are used to being in a church, amen? But I bless God that even the church started from the home. So we are still on track. Is somebody hearing me? 
Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. The Bible says, And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his remnant was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his disease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. Somebody say heavy with sleep. Heavy with sleep. Mm. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Can you see that? The Bible said, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. Understanding coming from the Lord. We seek spiritual understanding through the lives of your people present here this day in the name of Jesus. We ask that, Father, every word of truth you will reveal unto them for a change and a transformation in everything that concerns them. That, Lord, you will not return the same way they came here in the name of Jesus. I yield myself as your servant, that, Lord, you will use me mightily to speak this word of truth. And that every glory in me you hide behind your cross and let every glory be ascribed unto you alone in the name of Jesus. That which you have not given me, refrain my tongue from speaking. But that which you have given me, speak through me, O Lord, without fear or favor, that your people will be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. By the special grace of God, our message this morning is titled, An Unfamiliar Place. <coughs> Amen. How many heard that word? An unfamiliar place. Glory. An unfamiliar place. A place you are not familiar with. You are not used to. Amen? Mm -hmm. A strange place. A place you've never been before. So how do you handle it? When you are caught in a strange place, an unfamiliar environment, where you have never thrived, where you have never trodden, you are in it. How do you operate in it? Because majority of us, or most of us, we found ourselves in such places. We might be looking at it from a religious background or a religious angle, but let us keep that aside and look at the physical. Is somebody hearing me? An unfamiliar place can be a place of work. A place of learning. Why a place of work? A place where you go, putting your best to receive. But there are certain places you will go to that become strange to you or looks like a stranger. I don't know if somebody is following. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just read this story and the Bible told us that Jesus took three people, Peter, James, and 
John into a mountain to pray. These people are just brought into a different dimension of worship. Remember, they are the disciples of Christ. They've been moving around with him. But as of this point in time, Christ called the three of them and took them up to the mountain to pray. So to them, that was a strange place where they have never been before. But they have to operate in that place. Because if they are not needed in that place, there was no way Christ would have handpicked the three of them to go up there to pray. So it means they've been prepared for it. Amen? Amen. They've been prepared for the strange place, the unfamiliar place. But the thing is, we, as children, we fail to identify or understand our own familiar places. We become hesitant when you are in an unfamiliar place. Like before the service started, I told her, I said, don't be hesitant, they can't. Try and key in, try and understand what's going on in your own familiar place. By the time you understand it, then you will know if it is convenient or comfortable for you. But the truth is, every unfamiliar place comes with knowledge. Amen? Amen. It comes with what? Knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. It also comes with belief. And it also comes with what? Trust. So knowledge, belief, and trust are the three key elements that helps you to operate in any unfamiliar environment. So you have to put all those three things in your mind for you to operate in such places. Knowledge, belief, and trust. You always have to be sensitive to the confirmations of the worries the confirmations of the worries when caught in a strange place. Why confirmation of the worries? The thing that tends to check you or challenge you when you are in that place. You have to be sensitive about them. And you need the help of the Holy Ghost <laughs> to get answers. Because without discernment, there is no way you can get an understanding of that place. Amen? Amen. Some of us will be wondering, what's, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Hallelujah. Do you know you can find your play, your, yourself caught amongst friends doing stuff that you are not used to? Do you believe? Mm -hmm. That you might be caught amongst friends and you see them doing stuff that you are not used to. For some, it tends to be a repulse. You, you want to discard of it or get away from it. Amen? That is if it's a negative environment. Now, if it's a positive environment, you tend to check it out to know exactly what is really going on there. Because you are new to that environment. So it happens in both ways, whether you believe or you don't believe. Amen? It depends on the environment, the unfamiliar place you found yourself. But the good news is, God will never lead you to an unfamiliar place that is not profitable to your life. Is somebody hearing me? God will never guide you to an unfamiliar place that will never be profitable in your life. Whatever he does is for your profit. Whatever he does is for your good. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says he took the three of them. So he was working out something for them. He took them up to pray. Three men to pray. But when they got to that environment, it was strange to them. Because they had never seen anything of such. In fact, the Bible said, when Jesus Christ was praying, they were busy sleeping. 
They were fast asleep. But somewhere along the line, Peter woke up and was able to have a glimpse of what was going on. And the Bible said when Jesus was praying, hallelujah, he says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his remnant was white and glistering. As he prayed, his appearance changed. And remember when all this was happening, the Bible said Peter was sleeping, but all of a sudden Peter woke up to have a glimpse of what was going on. And Peter could see the same Christ, the same Jesus, he has been walking with all his life, transfigured. Looking like a reflection. He could not beheld it. He could not understand it. He could not interpret it. Because he was caught in a strange place where he has never been before. So he was trying to fit in. Amen? He was trying to fit in. Hallelujah. But this is what the Bible said. Glory. This is what the Bible said. But Peter, verse 32, and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Listen to his conversation. Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. The Bible said, not knowing what he said. Is God making mistake there? The Holy Spirit cannot make mistake in his information. The man said, let us build three tabernacles because I have been privileged to see what's going on here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elias. But the Holy Spirit said he did not know what he was saying. Why? Because he was caught in an unfamiliar place where he had never been before. He was confused. His mind was blown. So most times when you see yourself in an unfamiliar place, you agitate a lot. You begin to worry. What's going on? What? You can't fit in. You can't fit in. Oh God, why, 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 why? You, you, you begin to live a confused life. But God is bringing that to an end today in Jesus' name. Mm. Because Every unfamiliar place you begin to operate, you will take charge. Is somebody hearing me? I said every unfamiliar place you begin to operate in, you will take charge. Why? Because you are a light amongst all. You can't be a light and people will not be attracted unto you. They will follow you. Is somebody hearing me? So even in that unfamiliar environment, the environment is subject to identify with you. So these three disciples that were here with Christ, that were unable to understand the environment they were operating in, start acting up. You know people act up in some certain environments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they begin to act up. Why? Because they cannot measure with you. They can't measure with who you are. They begin to act up. So they were acting up because Christ was already personifying who he is before them. And they were confused because they had never seen him like that before. So they were acting up. So when there's a transformation in your life and it begins to showcase itself without you even saying it to people, people tend to hold themselves and watch you. Hmm. Isn't that strange? Why is she acting like this now? She does not act like this before. What's going on? They want to know. Amen? Amen. You become an influence in that environment. Like I said, you cannot be a child of light and don't command results. People will follow you. Are you hearing me? Mm. Like I said, three key things. Knowledge, belief, and trust. Knowledge. 
Like I said, this is impactful information. Did you hear that? Knowledge is impactful information that acts as an aid in developing one's facts, feelings, findings, or experiences. Knowledge. That is when you are in an unfamiliar environment. Every knowledge you have, have acquired is what positions you on how to operate in that environment. If you don't have knowledge, there is no way you can operate in that place. What are the kind of knowledge you have to bring you into that kind of unfamiliar environment? If the knowledge is not right, there is no way you can operate. Is somebody hearing me? That is why I said knowledge is impactful information that acts as an aid. It helps you in developing one's facts, the things you think you know, your feelings, your findings, or your experiences within that environment. Because if you don't have enough knowledge, which is information to help you, there is no way you can fit in or there is no way you can influence the environment. You are there to either influence or to fit in. Mm -hmm. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. You were there to influence or to fit in. That is why God cannot take you to a place and you will not command result. So who took me to that place? Or who called me to become a servant? Do I actually want to be a servant? No. But he chose it for me. Why? Because he knew that if I operate with the knowledge he had impacted in me, then I will operate in any unfamiliar environment. No matter what, I will take charge. I'm always in control. You have to see these facts. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. The next key ingredient is belief. Belief. To come to terms that something is true, correct, or real. Mm -hmm. To believe. That something is true, correct, or real. That is the word belief. So how do you know? It says come to terms. You have to yield yourself to it. By the information you hear. Which is the knowledge you have acquired. What is the source of that knowledge? Amen? Amen. What is the source of that knowledge? Is the source genuine? Is it actually facts finding? Hallelujah. Let me quickly show you something in Romans 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. Romans, Romans is in the New Testament. You just move further up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is somebody learning something here this morning? Oh. Romans 10, Amen. verse 14. The Bible says, hmm, they have not believed. Can you see that? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without what? A preacher. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And we are saying belief is to come to terms that something is true, correct, or real. So if you don't come to terms to believe that Jesus is actually the Son of God and that he rose on the third day from the dead and ascended into heaven and that by him all men is redeemed, then there is no way you can operate. Is somebody learning something? Then there is no way you can operate. Because it means that which you believe is not actually what you believe. Because Romans 10, 14 clearly states it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You don't believe in me. So how do you expect to get any benefit from me? There is no way. I cannot profit you. Why? Because you didn't believe in me. The Bible said he was unable to do miracles in the place his own land as a result of their own belief. 
their unbelief limited the level at which he was to bless them. Mm -hmm. It limited the level because they failed to believe. Amen? Mm -hmm. So belief is one of the key ingredients that helps you, the key elements that helps you when you find yourself in an unfamiliar place. What do you believe? Amen? Amen? Like the first thing I said, knowledge, then believe. The third one is trust. Hallelujah. The ability to rest your hope and worries in that which you have gotten through knowledge. You see it? <laughs> the ability to rest your hopes and worries in that which you have gotten through knowledge. So it means because you now have information and you are operating with right information, you don't have to fight with the information anymore. Let the information take charge. He said, all ye that are heavily laden and labored, come unto me and I will do what? Give you rest. Do you really believe? It takes trust to see yourself operating in that. I have come to know you. I now believe. Why do I believe? Because I have gotten information of who you are. It has helped me in my knowledge to know who you are. Now, it has triggered me to believe in who you are. And now, because it has triggered me to believe who you are, I am now trusting you for who you say you are. So, I have to rest it on you. So, why are you fighting the warfare? Is <laughs> somebody hearing me? So, why are you fighting the warfare? It is because you don't believe and trust. And these are the three ingredients of faith. Knowledge, belief, and trust. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Everything seems to be invisible. But yet you are making it visible in your mentality. Evidence of things not seen. You see that in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Amen? So you have to understand all of this when you are operating in your own familiar place. What knowledge have I gotten that will help me to operate in this place? Because Christ himself in that unfamiliar environment he was operating in line with the wisdom and knowledge he had gotten from his father from above. So he was communicating with Elias and Moses who were already dead. Because the Bible said they were telling him about what he will accomplish in Jerusalem. They were telling him about his death. You are going to Jerusalem to die. But even when you die, on the third day you will rise again. So if the disciples were privileged to have had all of those information, do you think Peter would have bothered to slice somebody's ears trying to protect the master when God had already said it, that this is what will be? It's like God telling you an information, telling you that, see, my daughter, the moment you step into that office, there will be promotion for you. The moment you step into that place, my daughter, I say there will be promotion for you. And you, you, let, let me put it this way. You fail to hear the information. And you stepped into the office. Hear this. You fail to hear the information the Spirit has given you. And you stepped into the office. And the moment you stepped into the office, your boss looked at you and said, uh, uh, Did you know that uh, Sarah just left her job today? And, you know, that city is vacant. I think we'll have to put you there today. you start operating in that office. And you said, me? Me? How, how can? Do you see how you acted? How can? You fail to receive it, but the Holy Spirit has already told you that the moment you step into that place, there is promotion. But because you fail to hear the information that has been given you, you don't know how to receive it when it came forth. 
So Peter was not privileged to hear what Elias and Moses said to Jesus. That was why he was acting up when the temple guards came to pick Jesus. When they came to arrest him. The Bible said he rose up, brought out his sword and cut off a man's ear. Even Jesus stopped him. And said, don't you know that he that lived by the sword died by the sword? Because if you were operating in that unfamiliar environment that I took you to, you would have gotten first information. You were not knowledgeable enough to hear and to believe and to trust what has been given me. That is why you are acting up. If you have gotten it, there is no need for you to have acted because you already know. So when you are conscious and aware of something, it does not take you by surprise. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or am I communicating right? It does not bother you anymore because you are already conscious and aware of it. That is why we are not taken by surprise. My wife can tell you everything that comes, I just oh, only it's okay. I always say it is okay. You can't take me by surprise. Because I know you cannot surprise my God. Who can mm -hmm. surprise God? Mm -hmm. What do you think you have to blow the mind of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is somebody learning something? Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Is somebody learning something? Mm -hmm. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Glory. Amen? Look at Psalms 34. Let me quickly take you there. Psalms 34. It's in the Old Testament. Glory. I'm excited that there are people here today, you know, to hear these words. These are words people are seeking for, but they still can't find. But I bless God that we are all gathered here to hear this. Psalms 34, look at verses 22. Amen. Amen. Are we there? Amen. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servants. And none of them that what trust in him shall be what desolate. You can never be abandoned. Did you hear what the psalmist said? The Lord redeemed the soul of his servants. That is, God will never allow you to go astray. Amen. Even in your unfamiliar environment, God will not permit the enemy to destroy you. Rather, you become a team of influence in that environment. Is somebody hearing me? You become a team of influence in that same unfamiliar place. Where people cannot relate with. People begin to know that place. No, 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 I can't pray that. Don't you know the way they behave in that place? But when you go there, you step your feet in that place. Everything changes. Why? Because you know who you are. You operate with a wisdom that they cannot function with. You know where your knowledge is. It is coming from above, Amen. not from the net. You know the one you trust and the one you believe in. Mm -hmm. That when you say it, you see it. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? Amen. So the psalmist said, The Lord redeemed the souls of his servants. He redeemed them. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You can never, never be abandoned. So no matter the situation, no matter where you are positioned, you are already positioned for glory. Did I hear an amen? amen. I said no matter where you are, no matter where you are positioned, you are already positioned for glory. It might be in the clinic, you are positioned for your healing. It might be in your job, you are positioned for a promotion. It Amen. might be in your marriage. You are positioned for goodness and greatness. Amen. It might even be in your business. God is the one that is positioning you and profiting you. Not man. Amen. But you have to know what you are operating. Is somebody learning something? Yes. Look at Psalms 37 and verse 5. Hallelujah. 37 and verse 5. The Bible says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, Trust also in him, and he shall what? 
bring it to pass. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall what? Bring it to pass. What does it take to bring something to pass? What does it take to bring something to pass? It means that which you have hoped for, you see. So faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Is somebody making sense here? Amen. So there's so much you have. Amen? Amen. There's so much you have. But the problem is you've not actually used them or brought them into life. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. You are a person of influence. Say, I'm a person of influence. I'm a person of influence. Say it like you mean it, not joking. I'm a person of influence. I'm a person of influence. Do you know why you have to say that? If Christ is not a person of influence, those disciples will never have been with him. They would have gotten a piece of him and left him. Do you know? But they could not, even unto death. Even unto death, they were still holding and clinging to the cross. Why? Because he was able to impact something in their lives. God did not make you a nobody. Amen. He made you a somebody. And because you are somebody, you are a person of influence. Amen. Walk with that mindset. And you will see how you will affect your peers. Yes. Is somebody learning something? Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight. I'm taking you guys through these scriptures. Today's message is more of a teaching service, okay? Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew is in the New Testament also. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Are we all there? Look at what the scripture says. Come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavily laden, and I will do what? Give you rest. And I will what? Give you rest. It's a promise of assurance. All ye that are heavily laden and labor, come, he said, to me. Because I am the answer to your situation. I am the answer to your cure. I am the answer to your difficulties. Anytime you turn your face to me, I give you what you want. He said, and I will give you rest. So when you are seeking peace that passes all human understanding, there is nowhere else to turn to. Turn unto God. Look unto Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And you see yourself commanding results. Is somebody hearing me? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, like I said, these three key elements, which is knowledge, belief, and trust, they are the ingredients of faith. These are the only things that when you put them together, then your faith commands result. When you put them together, the knowledge you have had, the knowledge you have received from him, what knowledge? The book. This is the book. You move with it continually. Every information this book has given you is the knowledge you are operating. So when you are in an unfamiliar environment and things begin to take negative uh, 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 shape, you begin to call them from what they are to be what you want them to become. Your boss is always harassing you. You speak. Not to go and shout on your boss, but to speak in the spirit and he will hear you. I don't know if, you, if it's making sense. Your boss is constantly harassing you wherever you go to. He won't give you peace of mind. 
you go down in prayer and you speak and you will see him making peace with you. Why? Because you have come to work with the information you carry here. Amen? So those three ingredients, those are the things that helps you boost your faith. And the Bible says it is impossible to please him without faith. <coughs> Hebrews what? Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Oh God! So if you don't have knowledge, you don't have belief and trust, in God, then there is no way God can function for you. Because it is the knowledge of him you have that makes you believe in him and trust him. So he says it is impossible without, uh, uh, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe mm -hmm. that he is. Mm -hmm. What do you know of God? The knowledge you have acquired. Amen? Amen. Believe that he is. Can you see that in your Bible? And that he is a what? Rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Which means there will always be a result. Mm -hmm. So when you are in that unfamiliar environment, already believe yeah. that you are the answer. Amen. Believe you are the answer. If you believe it, it will come to pass. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? So don't look at what is going on around you. Trust in God. Amen. Believe in him. And you begin to see the transformation coming gradually. The disciples saw what was going on in the life of Christ. As he stood there on the mountain praying, the Bible said, his remnant changed, altered. It was glistering. And they could see and know that this is not the Jesus that came here with us. So what's going on? Amen? They could see it. That was why Peter, was, the Bible said they were confused. They were like, eh, eh, okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. They begin to act up because they were unable to fit in. The moment you acquire knowledge to fit in, then you become a commander. Listen to what the Bible said in our text story. Let me take you quickly there. In our text story, look at what the Bible said in, in verse um, 34. While he thus speak, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. The Bible said, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. Then verse 35 said, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, Remember the Bible said the cloud came and overshadowed them. That means the cloud came and covered them. After the cloud covered them, the Bible said inside that covering cloud, a voice came and said something to them. What did the voice say? The voice said this. This is my beloved son. What did he say they should do? Hear him. Because if you don't hear him, you can't operate in this environment. If you don't hear him, you can't operate in this environment. I don't know the environment some of us are operating in right now. Each and every one of us, we have certain environments that we are operating in right now. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it is not comfortable. For some, it is okay. But for some, they are like, oh my God, what do I do about this again? The Bible says hear him. Mm -hmm. If you can hear him, then you receive answers. Amen? Amen? If only you can hear him, then you begin to command result. Because without hearing him, you are still who you are, operating on your knowledge and wisdom. And the Bible says the wisdom of men is what? Foolishness before God. The wisdom of men. So what do you think you know that is better than the knowledge of the I am that I am? Mm -hmm. You have to operate in him. Amen? Amen? You have to do what? Operate in Him. Mm -hmm. Anytime you operate in Him, then results begin to come forth. Amen? Amen? 
So when you see yourself striving in that unfamiliar environment, trying to understand it, seek the face of God. Mm -hmm. Lord, what do I do at this time? I don't know why everything is going on like this, but I know it's not working for my good. Help me, O oh Lord, that I hear you clearly, that from this day I will take control. Then you live at peace. That restlessness, that hostility will bow to you. Why? Because you have prayed and you have had him. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. To become overcomers or victorious in our unfamiliar places, there are three things we have to always put in place. We must believe in our abilities to succeed through knowledge we've already received. You see that? We must believe in our abilities to succeed through the knowledge we've already received. So if you don't know the source of your knowledge, it is already a problem. Is somebody hearing me? If you don't know the source of your, pro your knowledge, it is already a problem. You cannot take counsel with the devil and think you will command result. Oh, you will fail. I'm telling you the truth. You will fail. You will become a disgrace. Is somebody hearing me? You will become what? A disgrace. So you have to understand the source of your knowledge. If your knowledge is not from God, whoa, so sad. That is why you have to prepare yourself to know him. Mm -hmm. Is somebody hearing me? Mm -hmm. Number two, believe you can always make a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> believe that you can do what? Make a difference always. Why? Because you know who you are. They don't talk down on you. You know who you are. Amen? Amen? They can say everything to destroy your ego. But because of who you are and who you have come to know that you are, your ego will never go down. Why? Because you trust in who you are. He said, I am the head and not the tail. Amen? Amen. He has dangerously formed me. So why will I belittle myself? You can say it from your mouth, but it does not have any effect in me. That is why when they see you coming back, coming back, they tend to wonder, so we can't break him. How can they break you? They can't break you. Because you serve the living God. Amen? That is why you have to believe, always believe that you will make a difference. And also the third thing, believe to be outstanding and unique. Believe to be what? Outstanding and unique. Don't mix up yourself with the flocks that you know are not profitable to you. Amen? Amen. Don't join the gossipers in the office and everybody is talking. You are there. Your mouth is running too. Did you hear that yesterday? The word says, believe to be upstanding and unique. Make yourself different out of the Lord. Stand out. Then you become the living example. People look at you and say, that is him. In my former place of work, they always schedule each and every one of us, you know, to different places. And the assigned place that I have was Chesapeake. But all of a sudden, they gave me postmort and so forth in addition. So I was doing Postman, Suffolk, and Chesapeake together. So it was more like a workload for me. Amen? It was more like a workload. And some days, some of my friends, which are also my co-workers, you know, they saw my schedule and they were like, hmm, this is too much, man. This is, you know. I didn't take time to gossip. I went about my business. They said it, it is fine. Okay? It is fine that they said it. And it's the truth. But I didn't allow that to affect what I am doing. Because if it affects what I am doing, it will affect their perception about who I am. Is somebody hearing me? <laughs> I still went about my job giving them the best. 
and they could see it and they could still relate with it. That by the time I decide to put in my resignation letter, four managers were running helter skelter. I told my wife. Mm -hmm. They said they want to call my wife and speak to her so that I should not go. Why? Because I made myself unique. Irrespective of what was going on, I didn't look at it. Mm -hmm. That is why you have to be outstanding. Mm -hmm. Anytime you are outstanding, people emulate you. So even in the office, they'll say, don't you see Rudy? Does he complain? You know, every day they say, do this, you complain, complain, you don't to complain. Go and do something, is it not your mate too? You become the one people use, for example. God will turn things around in your life that when people look at you, they will use you as an example. To say, don't you see her? Don't you see him? Amen? Amen. Because that is what they said of Christ. The Bible said they now knew that the disciples were with Jesus. From the way Peter was acting in the Acts of Apostles, he was preaching, he was ministering, and when they looked at him, they could perceive that he had taken knowledge from Christ. They could identify who he is. Because Christ has rubbed on him. I pray Christ will begin to rub on everyone here from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say I, it is my prayer that Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, will yes. begin to rub yes. on each and everyone present here today in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you begin Amen. to yield yourself to him yes. in every unfamiliar environment, I decree upon your life that you begin to command results in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter what that unfamiliar place might be, be it in the hospital, be it in a sick bed, be it in your job, be it in your relationship, be it in your workplace, whatever that unfamiliar place might be, I decree as a servant of God that from today, you will begin to take influence in that place in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you believe that, rise up on your feet. Everlasting Father, we bless you, we thank you. We give you praise and glory for who you are. There is none like unto thee. We thank you for your word that has come strong. We bless you for every word of understanding you've revealed into the hearts of your people. We ask that, Lord, that we walk and run with these words. For you said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Father, every word they have heard, I ask that you begin to salt in their lives, that their faith will be strong, to perfect all that needs perfection in the name of Jesus. Every unfamiliar areas in their lives, I begin to speak your hand of mercy upon them. That, Lord, you will give them results in the mighty name of Jesus. You will give them the knowledge. You will give them the belief and the trust to continually seek you and to look unto the who is the author and finisher of our faith. That you are the only source to an answer in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We come against every work of the enemy that we want to contend with their place of unfamiliar, with, with, with their places of with their strange places. We come against every work of the enemy. We banish and destroy them that, Lord, they will not have a place in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you, we give you glory. Let your name be highly exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 How many actually got something from the message? Amen.